I said, I'm just going to do something that's so hardcore an adult after this. I'm not playing a sweet man ever again. And I was mad. And uh, my wife said, well, you know, if you're going to do that, well, then you have to, we have to hold to it. And you have to reinvent your look. You have to, you have to, the words she used were, it's not incumbent upon the studios and um, the networks to reinvent you. It's incumbent upon you to reinvent yourself, which I thought was, it stuck in my head. It was a brilliant quote. And I just was like, you're right. And so I embarked on this like six month training program where I just, I shaved my head and I just hit the gym three hours a day. And I got in sick shape at that time and uh, just was determined, okay, I'm going to not take a job until I get to play someone uh, in the context of something that's really, really real, naturalistic, hard-hitting, uh, adult material. This is, I'm not doing anything family-friendly anymore. Uh, <clears throat> I have to break that mold. I have to, because I knew it was within me to do it. I knew it. Uh, but, you know, I understand why in this business, People don't think in, in these terms, I, and I highly recommend it. If you're an actor and you're in this business, you have to think about an executive. And if I'm the executive uh, you know, in charge of a $300 million or billion dollar budget for the season, um, you tend to compartmentalize and look at things and plug things in in the way that they work. So you become a cliche to that person. Oh, we need a, a an affable guy. Chickless will go there. We we need a mean guy. This so and so will go there. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. So that's how you get typecast. It's more because the guy or the woman is just thinking, looking at a huge palette, and they have to plug people into that. So they can't reinvent you in their head. You know that's not up to them. So I became determined to, to present an entirely different person to these people. And I was very fortunate that right at that time when I was really looking to do that, the shield manifests itself. And I happened to walk into a Jimboree class that my wife dragged me to because we had our second child at the time who was a baby. And, um, you know, not that I'm, I was opposed to going to Jimboree. I'm, I'm a wonderful father. I'm very attentive. But that day I didn't want to go. I just didn't. And uh, she dragged me, and there was Kathy Ryan, who my wife happened to know since they were five years old. They grew up in Pickwick in uh, Miami, North Miami Beach together. And she in introduced me to her husband, this guy, this bald guy named Sean. So, hey, Sean, how you doing? What do you do? I'm a writer. Oh, that's great. What are you doing? Uh, I wrote a pilot that got picked up. You know, it's, uh, it's called The Barn. It's... Uh, at, um, it's at this network called FX. And I thought, wow, he's doing something about farm animals at a station I've never heard of. Uh, that's cool. All right. Uh, <laughs> that, that's the truth. I did not know what FX was. I kind of did because I had done an interview for them when I was doing the Broadway show in 97. It was some, like, talk soup or something. Thing like that it you know and uh, but they basically did reruns of things you know right. with FX right I thought oh that's that's cute you know I was patronizing almost it was wrong of me but well then I read that script and I will never forget it in my life I just thought this is the best script I've ever read period and I need to play this guy and I guess you can see right away the barn wasn't a reference to <laughs> a barn yeah. an actual barn yeah Right. Yeah, it was the reference to the name of the, the precinct. They right. called it the barn, right. obviously. And uh, then it got changed, the title got changed to um, Rampart, which all of us hated because it was too on the nose. Mm -hmm. It was too much of a reference to right. the Rampart scandals. And then Sean, as he always did, came up with the perfect thing, which was the perfect title, which was The Shield. And it had that double entendre and... It was perfect, um, and the rest is history in that area. So I was looking for the right job, and at 
we were my wife and I were writing this this script about a, a rogue cop as a feature film for me to redefine, right? And when the shield came up and I sent it to my reps, they were like, you know, all right, well, we'll try to pull an offer. Uh, but they want you to read. And I was like, no, no, I'm going to read for this. And they were like, absolutely not. You're a network television star. You, 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 you know, they, they should offer this to you. And I was like, have you read this? And they're not going to offer this to me because they think of me as, you know, the industry thinks of me as this other guy. And we're lucky here. Sean doesn't know my work. <laughs> you know what I mean? He knows me as the guy, this sort of hard guy that walked into Jimboree. You know, he doesn't know me, you know. And that was a godsend because I believe that if The Shield was at any of the networks, I would not have gotten the job. They would have passed on me out of hand and not even let me read for it. So I knew I had to earn the role. I knew I had to win it. And, I, and there's a lot of value in that. When you win something, then everybody's mind is set at ease. You know, uh, then we were, could all then go shoulder to shoulder and walk together as opposed to, you know, being at odds or having them worry about it. You know, they knew. So I went in and I read for Sean and uh, Clark Johnson, and then they brought me to network. And I remember, and I've told the story before, but it's true, when I was in, there was me and one other guy uh, and when I went to network. And uh, I knew that Kevin Riley and Peter Ligori were in, in there, and I knew that Sean and, uh, was in there, and uh, the casting director and the reader. And all of a sudden, I just became infuriated. I just, I just thought, they're, they're not going to let me have this. They're not going to let me do this. They think they know who I am. I don't know why I thought this, but it, and it just, uh, it just enraged me. And, uh, and I just thought, well, um, if nothing else, I'm just going to make them fear me. <laughs> Uh, that was probably fortuitous that I had that feeling because I, I went in there very, very heightened. Uh, and I, I, I can only imagine that it made them like sort of go like, oh, uh, <laughs> what's going on here, you know, because I came in with a certain level of energy. And it worked out, um, uh, and I got the job. And uh, then I turned it on them, and I... When, now that I was offered the job, I said to Kevin and Peter at the time, I very distinctly remember saying, look, are we going to make this? Because if, if we go to work and the pink pages come in and this is not this, and it's now the softened version and that's pulling back, I'm going to quit. I don't want it. That's, I, I need this to be this. And Peter very coolly said, no, uh, it'll, we'll go further, if anything. Uh, we need to compete with HBO. Uh, that's the mandate, and we're going to swing for the fence, and we'll either land on our asses or we'll be, we'll be the heroes of the world, but nothing in between. And uh, we swung. <laughs>